in Ephesians chapter number 1, we want to look at verse number 3 and then go to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says in chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Brother John, it's been a privilege to be with you and your family. If you don't mind, preacher, would you please pray for me? Amen and amen. Some years ago, probably 22, 20, excuse me, about 19 years ago, the church that I was in there was a dynamic work at one time. They had had a huge Christian school. Part of the benefits of the, stu- the teachers that were in that Christian school, they supplied them a house to live in with the salary and with all the things they'd done. They owned a lot of uh, block after block and acre after acre there in town. Things went south. Somebody, one of the assistant pastors, handled some things wrong, and because he did, they voted the pastor out. And he lived in the parsonage across the way that they had given to him. And some years had went by since all of that had just kind of set headed downhill and just kept getting farther and farther and farther low as it could have been when I went to be the pastor. And little did I know about what went on. I met the former pastor, the one that that had went on with, one day. Somebody introduced me to him. We spent a little time together, and he asked me a question. He said, Pastor, can I go in the building? He said, I haven't been in since they voted me out. Now, he may have left, but his heart never did. I opened the door, cut the lights on. The time of the year it was, the temperature in the building was good enough and turned him loose. Shortly after that, God put it on my heart to honor that man. We brought him back in the building, had a huge day of honor trying to mend all of that brokenness back up. Little did I know what a friendship that would be. He later became, when we sold that building, went to the new one, he became a part-time Sunday school teacher for me and about 86 years old. He told me one day, he said, Brother Stacy, here's the main key to everything. Once they're saved, you'll work all your life trying to keep them excited about Jesus. But he said, that's the problem. He said, what you must do and I must do in all of our ministry is teach them how to love Jesus. He said, all the problems they have the heartaches they have, the things that go on in their life, if they'll fall in love with Jesus, that will take care of itself. That being said, I want to preach on tonight, staying in love with Jesus. How do we do that? As I have been about it this some few years and tried my best to learn as much as I can about my Lord... The more I learn about him, the more I love him. The more I learn about today, one of the situations that I've been dealing with as a pastor trying to help an individual, some things that went on in their life and they had to get some kind of assistance help and they'd call me and ask about recommendations, uh, how to handle that, and I gave them my advice and 
gave them a couple of options that they should have tried to do and if they had do that I felt led God would do it they chose something someone else offered them instead of the pastor I had shared with them as I share with everybody in our church you do what God says and God says only God says do it and it lines up with the book you better do it don't pay no attention to what nobody says today I got a phone call and that individual called and said you know the place and the thing the situation the way it is I went and done and took part of this and found out so quickly what they said was God God wouldn't know where to be found but oh, what I realized in this time is I don't need this and I don't need them. All I need is more him. Yeah. Now I said to myself, if they'd have went my way, what I'd suggested, what I thought, probably would have not worked. But what God put in their heart, and what they realized, what all God was to them, changed their life. 43 times in the book of Ephesians the word all is mentioned. If you and I will ever, 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 ever figure out all we have in Jesus, we won't have a problem staying in love with him. 43, if you do any kind of numerological studies about the Word of God, I love to do that. I love, everybody knows what number three is. Everybody knows what seven is. Everybody knows what five is. But when you start getting up in them bigger numbers, everybody kind of loses track. When you get to the number 43, basically 43 represents trials and testings with some kind of divine goal in mind. Said that the number 43, if 43 represents testings, then 43 represents a time of trials towards some goal as a spiritual growth of some other aspect of God's plan. He said this, he said, he wanted, you know what, no matter what you and all, what we're going through with in all of our life, as a child of God, God has a plan. Amen. He never means anything that goes on in our life for our harm. If anything goes on in our life and it brings harm to us, it is because of the way we respond, not because of what God does. Now as we look at a few of these things, God being our helper tonight, about all the things that God has for us, he said in verse number three, he said, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What are the spiritual blessings of our life that you and I have? What is that? Number one, it's our citizenship. I'm glad today. And by the way, the people that he's talking about are the children of God. Amen. If you're here today and you are a Christian, or not a Christian, I should say, you are a citizen of this land but I'm here to tell you as a child of God you know what I realize what one of my heavenly blessings is that this is not my home I'm just a passing through I'm going to a better place Miss Sydney sung that song a while ago and she talked about death. I'll not fear death. Listen, there's a lot of people today that are scared to death of death. You know what? I am ready to go maybe not on this bus load but if that's God's will, I'm ready. Amen. You know what I am? I am located up there in the splendors of glory. Citizenship. It is the state of being vested with the rights and the privileges. Woo of a different place. Amen. Do you know what all the things that goes on in heaven that I get to enjoy? I, you and I can enjoy that down here on this earth. Amen. Now what are all the spiritual blessings? It's citizenship. Not only that, but it's my name. He says in Luke chapter 20, 10 verse 20, not, not rejoice with because the spirits are subject to us, but rather rejoice because what? My name's written down. Hey, man. Thanks be to God. Ain't that a wonderful thing to know? What a spiritual blessing it is. I have a citizenship in another land. Hey, man. But I have my name written down in another land. You remember when they come out with those pens that you could erase the ink on? I remember doing that, and I'm a lefty. So everything I write, and I don't know how, I, I can't remember how the preacher writes. I don't see him write much or no more. He types, he writes a little up here. When I was in school, they tried to break you of the left hand and make you go to the right. 
They didn't want you to be left-handed because they didn't know how to teach you. And then when they did teach you, they'd turn that thing upside down like this. Look like you got something wrong with you while you're writing, I don't know. And that's probably, I think, the way you turn some of your paper just a little bit. I could never do that. Just as blessed God straight as it could be. I told you I wrote in tongues, amen. You ride across there and I had that all that mess all over my hand. I liked it when they come out with an erasable pen. I'd take the eraser and erase it off my hand and you know what? It would disappear. Ain't you glad today that your name's written in a book and there ain't no way to erase that? It ain't gonna get away if you wrote it down. Hey, if God wrote it down in his book, it's gonna be there for all eternity. Hey. If you're part of that crowd that believes you can jump out of his hand, I'm sorry, but I ain't part of that crowd. And I'm glad I can't do something stupid to jump out. Amen. Say, preacher, what are you saying? All spiritual blessings. I'm a citizen. I have a name. I have a father. You know what the Bible says? If in Colossians 3 and 1, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ setteth at the right hand of God. Do you know what? I have in heaven. And do you know what is a spiritual blessing to me? Not only do I have an earthly father, like every one of you do, but I've got a perfect, eternal, heavenly father. Amen. You say, what else you got? Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 talks about setting your affections on things above. Do you know what I have as a spiritual blessing? I have an attention and an affection on another world. Amen. It helps me every once in a while to get my eyes on something else besides this world. Hello. It helps me to come into the house of God and get my eyes on the amazing grace of God. I once was lost. I say I once was lost. I once was lost. But now I am found. Thanks be unto God. Do you know what? When I get down and out and things go south in my life and by the way they do we act like nothing ever goes wrong but it does it for every one of us but you know how I can stay in love with Jesus realizing all the spiritual blessings I have verse number 8 let's carry on in chapter 1 Bible says wherein he hath abundantly toward us and listen whoop mm, wherein he hath abundantly toward us in all wisdom and prudence who's he verse number 5 through verse number 8 tells us that it's the Lord Jesus Christ I'm glad I know who he is amen I'm glad of that staying in love with Jesus knowing all the things we have now look what he says he says he hath abundantly that word abundantly is mentioned five times in your King James Bible what it we talk about them numbers again. The good grace of God. Amen. Ain't that wonderful? Abundantly means to be handy. Woo! To be at hand in, excuse me, abounded means to be at hand in abundance. Got both them mixed up there. To be abounding means to be at hand in abundance. I watched that video here the other night and it broke my heart. I asked the preacher to get it. We just sent a check on Monday to pay for the roof. Broke my heart that I asked the preacher I said I want a copy of that thing I got a copy of that thing I went to the house went, went to the house last night went to the motel last night plugged that in my computer and figured out how to start working on it and I started fiddling with it and fiddling with it and fiddling with it sometime between there and this morning I got it or today I got it on my phone in a text message video style I took it off of that and I started blasting that thing out I got a business friend that he loves the Lord he's got more money than he knows what to do with and he loves it to give it he loves to give it away you know what he said I blasted it to him he's in Colorado uh, out there uh, on vacation He's getting on a plane. While he's on the plane, I shot it to him with a little text message. I said, this is God's man leading to get this building finished, and we need some money. He sat back, and he said, anything for the king's business. Amen. You say, preacher, what are you saying? We worry about how we're going to be able to afford this. How are we going to be able to afford that? Listen, you can say all you want to. I've heard it all my life. Well, God owns, uh, God owns the cattle on every hill. Well, bless God, he owns the hill the cattle's on. Amen. Hey, what a God. He's more than abundant. He's got an abundance. You and I sit around and act like God's going to run out. Like God's going to run out. God ain't going to run out. And it's easy to fall in love with someone that you know is abounded. Said abounded toward us. Toward us means he's ready to do it. He's on a readiness. He's on your mark. And you get set. And you know what, ready? <laughs> he's sitting. I remember that in school. 
I hated sport. I was big around as I was tall when I was a kid. If I don't keep quit doing it, I'm going to be that way before I get old. Couldn't stand it. When they had field day, I laid out. I hated running. I hated all that stuff. Tried to play sports. They run me to death. And I had to go home and do chores. I said, forget it. The thing I hated, I hated getting on that line in field day. Ready? Set? Go. If they never said that third word, I'd have still been happy. Because I was always the last in running. I was the last in the takeoff and the last in the return. Didn't matter how slow they were, I was always that dude. But you know what? I'm glad I ain't got a God like me. Amen. Right. He's standing on ready to go at any given minute. And he's just away. And I'll be honest with you, if you're sitting here tonight and he ain't turned loose, it may not be because of him. He may be waiting on you. Amen. Yeah. He may be waiting on you. And by the way, listen, if we're talk, we talked a little bit about materialistic things, but you know what? God, I don't need that. I don't have to have that. Give me something a whole lot greater than that. Yeah. Give me a joy that is full of glory. Amen. Give me a peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. Give me that. That money will not buy. That you can stay no matter what you're going through with and say you know what God's got this amen now what did he say he'd do look what he said he'd do he's gonna, by the way he said he's going to give it to us who's us it's the saved we, 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 I don't mean no disrespect to anybody that's lost but they don't get the benefits of being a child of God now we've let a world think that you don't have, all you got to do is come to church and get the benefits and I don't want to straighten them out and I ain't going to straighten them out all I want to know is need to meet Jesus fail meet Jesus Jesus straighten them out amen but I'm here to tell you there are some benefits of being a child of God that other people don't get thank God ain't you glad you're one of the us amen he said this he look, if you go on look what he said look what he said in that verse he said wherein he hath abundantly toward us in all there's that word all again second time you see it all what all wisdom you know what that's meaning the right use or exercise of knowledge now, I don't know about you but sometimes I lack I need some knowledge but it's here's what you need to understand knowledge is a great thing but if you don't know how to use it it's useless there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom because wisdom is having knowledge and knowing what to do with it. Amen. Amen. There's a whole lot of people got a whole lot of knowledge, but they don't know what to do with it. Hello? They can tell you how to do it, but they can't do it. Hey, Amen? You know what? I need to know how to do it, and I need to know how to do it at the right time. I don't want to do it wrong. I want to be the most effective I can be, and I want God to get glory. You know the sweetest time in my life? When I do something and God gets glory. Amen. That's the sweetest places I've ever been in my life. It ain't about me getting glory. It ain't about somebody else getting glorified. But when God gets glory, there's a sweetness there that you cannot explain. You cannot, you cannot imitate. It's only God. And the way to do that is to have wisdom. And you got to understand, the more we fall in love with the Lord, what we have, we have a God that helps us. Preach, I need to know what to do. Wisdom. Wisdom comes from where? The Lord. He said all that he'd give to us. Not only wisdom, but prudence. Prudence means it's in, it's invo it involves a caution. A consulting on some situation to accomplish a valuable purpose. I love to be full of zeal. But I'm glad I ain't what I was when I was 27. I had more zeal than I had anything. And zeal's a wonderful thing, but that don't mean you're preaching. Right. Zeal's a great thing. That don't mean you're teaching. Zeal's a wonderful thing. That don't mean you're singing. Zeal's a wonderful thing. That don't mean you're soul winning. Amen. You know what it takes? It takes some prudence. Amen. It takes a knowing when to say it, how to say it, and the tone to say it in. As I walked out of there tonight, all three of them, that, that, all three, that, that one man, that I hadn't talked a lot to him, but the man was there. Man, it brought me in. Them two little girls there, that one that I give that stuff information to. Every time I see her, I believe she worked 24 hours. When I went in last night, she was still there. When I come out this morning, she was still there. When I left today, every time I went by, she's still there. And I asked her, I said, did you go home many times? She said, yeah, I've been home and I'm back working again. But every time I seen her, I didn't have to say a word. Every time I seen her, she just grinned. I mean, she got a, she got a glow. Well, when I walked out this evening, there's all three of 
I don't know whether they was grinning because I was gone. They said, praise God, the idiots are leaving here. I don't know. But he said to me, he said, he said, are you gone? I said, yes, sir, I got to go. It's a bit. When you come back? I said, I don't know, but I'm telling you this. If I ever do come back or anybody I know comes back. Matter of fact, today on the phone, when I was talking to somebody that comes to this area, I told them where to stay. I said, because guess what? This is the best place I've ever stayed in all of my life in a motel. What a wonderful, wonderful facility you've got. And there they stood, just a glowing. I mean, to God, you couldn't have, you could, you couldn't have been a radiologist for 50 years and glowed like them people did. Something they had a glow about them was just unbelievable. When I left there, I said, thank you, Jesus. Let them remember the one that makes me shine. Amen! Know when to say, what to say. Guess what? I'm worried to death about this, and I'm worried to death. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to know when? How am I going to know how? How am I going to restrain? How am I going to do? Don't worry about it. Fall in love with Jesus, because he's the one that tells you and shows you how to do it. Amen. Verse number 10. Verse number 10, carry on. That in this dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Now let me get with this as quick as I can, all right? <laughs> He's telling us it ain't always going to be this way. He's telling us he's got a plan that he's going to perform. He's telling us he's going to pull everything on earth and in heaven together. <laughs> he's telling us that, you know what, all things are going to be united one day. You know what he's telling us to the children of God? If we're still alive and remaining one of these days, we're going to hear a sound like we ain't never heard before. <clears throat> I, went, I went to the Hope of Israel con uh, conference last year. And it, I didn't know people, I didn't know them Jews like them horns like they do. They like a horn. Them Jews like a good horn. They blow that thing like a, they had two of them over here blowing it. And God, I, I mean, they've done a tremendous job, but I don't know much about music. But they couldn't have been nowhere close to that song. I mean, the song was in left field way over here. And I don't know what they was playing, but it didn't sound nothing like, I mean, but it's still pretty. I don't know how you could be that far away from a song. It's like it's singing, playing, singing Amazing Grace and how great thou art was coming out of them horns. I ain't got no clue. But that was the sweetest sound. And it still sounded good. Oh, boy, get that. And finally, they put a muffler in one of his. He was playing it so loud. It wasn't about this long. I never seen. He barely could get one hand on that thing. He'd just sit there and do this. they come put a muffler in that thing. Uh, some kind of little thing popped it in there and slowed him down just a little bit so we could at least think. Have you ever tried to imagine what that sound's going to sound like? Woo, doggy, you say, preacher, how are we going to know? <laughs> I ain't going to have to ask yourself what that noise is. If I'm still alive, by the way, let me get help here. <laughs> we always have the Lord coming in the morning. Let me remind you of something. He didn't build everything around America. So if you're going to start looking for the daylight to come up, you might want to start looking over there where that center of the world is and realize if he's going to come in the morning, he might, want to, he might come in the morning where that crowd's at. Amen. We'll be standing around in the dark wondering what in the name of God's going on. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. You know what I got? I got a way out of here. Amen. Ain't you glad? I won't always have to be here. Neither will you. And it ain't always going to be this way. Ain't you glad? Amen. You need to rejoice in that. You need to know that. You need to settle that. You need to be happy about that. There's going to be a rapture. There's going to be a reunion. Those that you have not seen in a while, you're going to get to see them. My, 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 my choir leader, is a, he's a, he was a math teacher for years. He loved to sit down and figure up that thousand years is one day. And every time somebody in the church dies, if one of their loved ones died before them, he'll sit down and figure out when they died, what day and year and all that it was, do the math, and tell them how many seconds they've probably been in heaven. Because there ain't no time in heaven. You and I think, oh Lord, our loved one's been gone. My mama's been gone for nine years. It's been a long nine years to me, but you realize if you do, if you would like to do that biblical math 
And if you wanted to believe it that way, it's up to you. It ain't no big deal. You ain't going to hell if you don't believe it like I do. And I ain't going to hell if I don't believe it like you do. So it don't really matter. But here's the key. If you really want to do that, man, she probably been gone 10 or 11 seconds is about all she's been gone. Amen. To that level, you say, preacher, what are you saying? A reunion day. Oh, yeah. Now listen to me well. I don't know about you, and I love to see my loved ones. I got, I got a grandmother there. I got two of them there. When I started preaching, I was preaching on the radio. I didn't. I told God that Wednesday night, I, I, God, I surrendered my call to preach. I said, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, I don't want to sit around. I don't want to be that preacher sitting on a pew. I want to get out and I want to do it. Saturday I was a preaching. I couldn't, sometimes it wouldn't come, so I started a radio broadcast. I asked God, I paid to get to preach. If you want to preach bad enough, go get a radio broadcast. Amen. Ain't but two to three dollars a minute. Amen. Pay it. I remember I was, a pre I was preaching for 15 minutes. 15 minutes on Sunday on Sunday evening. I left the church Brother Luther was pastoring at 12.30. He, a lot of times he wouldn't be done. And I'd had to leave at 12.30 to get over at 12.45 to radio station. And I walked in that radio station. They had a big old room that you got to preach in with a glass wall in between me and that dude. I put my Bible out, and there wasn't nobody in there but me and him. I put my Bible on that podium, and I turned that podium right to where he was. I thought, bless God, I got a one-man crowd, but I'm going to preach. Preach for 15 minutes just as hard as I could. Sometimes I'd get 15, I'd get 15, 18, sometimes I'd get 20. I'd get to preach as hard that little red light. As long as that red light's on, it didn't matter to me. He'd get up and leave. Sometimes he'd get up and leave. He wouldn't come. I, he'd, he'd sneak back in there. He'd just come tippy-toeing back in there and hit the button and keep on walking. I'd see the light go off. One day I got a, I, I got a, a, a phone call. I was at home and I got a phone call. We didn't have cell phones in. I had a, got a phone call. This old, old man said, hey, he said, Preacher, my name's Arthur Ledford. He said, uh, I've been listening to you on the radio broadcast. He said, I've been really enjoying that. And I said, okay, that's good. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. He said, why do you just preach 15 minutes? I said, well, to be honest with you, I can't afford it. I said, I, I'm giving everything I can give, but I can't afford it. He said, if you're telling me that if you got 15 more minutes, you'd preach for 30 minutes, I said, I sure would. He said, mark her down. I'll be there Sunday with the money. Every single day until he died. He would come there, pay that extra fifteen that extra money for that fifteen minutes, and I'd preach. We were working one day, as you know, Brother Luther and we all went to Bible. Me and Travis went to Bible college and we put up by the side, seeing the scudders. We done anything we could to go to Bible college and carry on. We was working on the house one day, and lo and behold, here he come. I knew the little old ragged car he had; it wasn't much. He drove it up in there. He said, "Brother Stacy, what you doing?" I said, "We're working." He said, "I didn't know you was working this close to the house." I said, "Arthur, I didn't know you lived here." We've been knowing him about six, eight months now. He said, I said, I didn't know you lived here. He said, yes, sir. I live right over there. He said, you can't see my house, but he said, if you'll go up there to that next driveway, turn left, go up on the hill there, you'll find me. He said, you mind to come by? Just have a word of prayer before you go. I said, when I get done here, I'll come straight there. God is my witness. When I walked, pulled up in the driveway, I looked at that house, and I said, I'm at the wrong place. Ain't nobody lives here. Ain't no way nobody lives here. Front porch looked like it's about to fall off. Door was hanging cockeyed. Windows taped up in plastic. I walked over there, pecked on the door. And when I pecked on the door, it went open. It went right in. I said, Brother Arthur, you hit? Yes, sir, preacher, give me a minute. I'll be right there. Come on in and sit down. Just don't step on the towel when you come in the door. We talked a minute. I prayed with him. I turned to walk back out, and he said, Don't step on the towel when you go out the door. I said, Brother Arthur, why don't you want me to step on the towel? See the ground. I don't know that I've ever been around this man that was so happy in Jesus that had nothing. Till the day he died, I felt awful. God is my witness, I felt awful. I begged him to quit paying it, I'd pay it. I told him, I said, Arthur, Arthur, please. I didn't say nothing then, but the next Sunday when he came, I said, Arthur, please. God's been good to me. We've got a little more extra work. I've got the money. I didn't have it. I was lying through my teeth, but I wasn't going to let him. I was going to try my best to stop that man from paying. 
to the day he died. Well, the truth of the matter was, when he died, I thought, well, I'm going back to 15 minutes. My grandmother called me. She said, Stacy, how are you? I said, I'm good. She said, uh, could you use a little extra money for your radio broadcast? I said, Nanny Ball, I could. She said, well, come up here and I'll give you a check once a month. Exactly. I never knew my grandparents to ever work a job. To, the, to those that heard my story about the milk, they're the people that, they're the, they're the one milk cow, one garden growing, three acres of tobacco growing people, and that's how they lived. You know, one of these days I'm going to get to see them again and thank them for what they've done in my life. They taught me things that I didn't have a clue what they were teaching me, but they taught me what a reunion day that's going to be. But now you listen to me and you listen to me well. I have read about him and I have seen him in black and white and red. But I ain't never seen him in body. One of these days, whoo, glory be to God. One of these days, I'm going to get to see him and so are you. What a reunion that's going to be. What a reunion that's going to be. Not only a reunion, but a return. I think people talk about a one-way ticket to heaven. You can keep your one-way ticket if you want to, but I got a round trip. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm going to get to live down here one day in all this place of perfect peace for a little while. Now, I know it's going to change up, and I know things are going to be different. Now, I understand that, but can you imagine living here? You say, I sure would like to live on this earth when Jesus is alive. Well, guess what I'm going to? Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Thanks be unto God. And by the way, them disciples just got him for three and a half years and they seen some things that they can't even talk about. Can you imagine what it's going to be for all eternity when he returns and we return with him and see all that he does. Amen. You say, preach what he's saying. Look what he said there. Look, if you will, to verse number 10. That was verse number, that was verse number 10. Look, if you will, as we go on to verse number 11. He says in Ephesians, i got to hurry. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. What's he saying in that? All again. All the things we have in the Lord. What do we have? We're going to have a, according to the word of God, he says because of trusting Jesus Christ as our Savior, we're going to have an inheritance. Yeah. We can receive more rewards. We can lose them. You know what? People don't preach that much no more about receiving rewards and losing them. A lot of people just think they can receive them and they're never going to lose them. But the Bible teaches and tells that when you receive those rewards, you can lose them by living in an ungodly fashion. Right. By doing something wrong, you will lose them rewards. So they will be stripped away from you. But thanks be unto God, there's some of them that you just get by being a child of God. Amen. And do you know what that is? That's a home. Amen. He said, I got. You may be that cabin on the corner crowd. You may have, you, that may be your thing. And you may be thinking all about that. People tell me this. Well, preacher, what the world are we going to do with a mansion? I don't need a mansion. Under God, the older I get, I just want some kind of little box to live in that I don't have to keep up with. I have no idea what it is, but it's going to be home. And the Bible said a mansion. Amen. So you read in that any way you want to, but it's going to be a home. Mm. Brother Rogers, what did he say? What did he say last night? He said, it's good to be home. I, I know what that feels like. You know where home is? A place where God is. A place where you meet with a holy God. Hey! You say, preacher, what are you saying? You may not have a lot down here, and it may be limited, but thanks be unto God, all that we have in Him. And one of the alls is a heavenly home. Not only a heavenly home, but a heavenly body. Ooh -hoo. Our dear brother back there, I ask him every day, every evening since his back's hurting, you feeling better? You feeling better? How's your back? How's your back? To the young people around here, people... I ain't heard of one of you teenagers say this, and I want to commend you. So if you say it, don't tell me about it. But around our house, they're bad to comment about being tired. 18, 19 years old, 17 years old, 16 years old. What's wrong with you? I'm just so tired. 
What in God's name's a teenager got to be tired about? As much as you people played ball and run your stinking legs off playing ball, he wouldn't dare admit you was tired. You go over there and stand on the line waiting to get back in. Coach say you want to get back in. You can't breathe a breath. You're dying. If you had oxygen, you'd be tickled to death to have it. But you know what? He says, you tired? I ain't tired. Get me back in, coach. I want to play. Amen. Get me back in. I want to play. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Sometimes as life goes on, we're looking forward to a different body. I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't have many aches and pains. I don't have many ailments. But there's one thing I do have. A problem with getting to worship like I want to sometimes. I'd like to worship God like I really get to want to. You know what? It's going to take a heavenly body to do that. This one won't stand it. I get so excited in the Lord every once in a while I feel like I'm going to bust. Amen. But you know what? We'll get there in heaven and get a new body. Thanks be unto Wow! Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know what it feels like? Yeah. Just feel like you're fixing to explode? Yeah. That's what you're going to get in heaven. He said a body. Not only that, but a hence from. You find in, the, in Revelation chapter 20, he talks about being a hence from. What is he talking about these things that he's working in us? He's working us. I like roasting s'mores. I'm a s'more cooker around the house. If we have a campfire, everybody lets me do the s'mores. I hate, I, I, people just, this is maybe you, we get a campfire, take that stick out there and you stick it over that marshmallow over and it goes up in flames and then you put it on a little chocolate and cram two granola or graham crackers and pull it off fire. Bless God, you can't tell if that's chocolate or, or, or marshmallow. All of it's black. Bite down in it and under God the chocolate ain't even soft. It's hard as a brick like it coming out of the refrigerator. I like to sit down there and I'll sit down and get me a chair and get a long stick and I'll just sit there and turn there. When it gets warm enough and it starts dripping, I'm turning while it won't drip off. They got everything ready and about the time they get everything ready, about the time it drips, it drips off of that right on top of that chocolate. Toasted brown. By the time they get it to their mouths, chocolate's oozing out the cracker. I like doing that. That's about the only thing I can cook. So if my, something happens to my wife and my children don't take care of me, I'm going to live off s'mores. <laughs> I've always told the church, I can't wait till this thing sets on fire. I've had so much stinking problems and heartaches and people I love has went through so much. I hope to God when she burns, God gives me a wiener and a marshmallow and a stick and I get to broast her. I preach that forever. Burn! Praise God, all my problems is gone. Until, until I realized how much of this stinking mess right here we got. That'd be nasty. Could you imagine eating the s'mores off electronic smoke? Because I promise you, that mess is going to be the first thing that burns up. Because it's destroyed. It's full of, the, you know what? Because it's destroyed many. I had, another thing I hadn't seen is a cell phone. Yeah. Any takers? You got cell phones? I'm sorry. When I was a boy, you had to go looking for sin. Yeah. You had to go behind the counter to buy the books. If you're going to get one, you had to figure out how to get somebody to buy it for you because you even had to be... I laughed my stinking head off. I was standing in a gas station the other day and forgive it. There's a man looked our age buying a can of Copenhagen or something and that girl looked at him and said, do you have your ID? <laughs> Got to be 21 in Georgia to buy tobacco. But you can buy a cell phone and open up Tiki Talkie or whatever, Snappy Chatty, and it comes to you. You don't have to look for it. 
you can't tell me that ain't going to be the first thing God burns on this place. I love electronics because they make life easy. But I hate what they do to the young people that ain't got, ain't got enough God to know when to turn it off. And the Christians that ain't strong enough in God to turn it off. Amen. I, I promise you. I promise you. I'm not against them. I'm just against what they do if they're not controlled. Amen. Henceforth, we're going to a place where that will not be anymore. Verse 15, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and love unto all the saints, all these saints. Now what is he saying here? All. What is he talking about? All that we have in him from them. You know what he's saying? He said, listen, I need you to know something. Not only you got me, but you got a bigger family. According to what he's saying here, he's trying to get us to understand we need each other. Amen. I said it the other night. The, be, the, the most important relationship you could have is one with God. The second most valuable thing you could have is a relationship with people. I watched the old boy back here. Would you please buy a bigger shirt? Do you need money to buy a bigger shirt? To us that don't look like that, that makes us look bad. I wouldn't take my coat off in here if he drug it off of me. His arm's bigger than my legs. <laughs> Buy a shirt, bless God, and hide that. I pronounce some of them other cultures on you now where you got to cover yourself so they can't see all that. But you listen. Those two young men that you people love why are they here? You say, God. God and what? God and a relationship with two daddies, two families. Do you honestly think if this man would have never come around, you fellas would be sitting right here? I ain't never been over there. But I've been away from America enough to know that this place has got it better than anywhere in the world. And they get to enjoy a privilege because, guess what, of a relationship with other people. You say, preacher, what are you saying? Well, I can just be by myself. I don't need nobody. I'll isolate. And by the way, if you're that person, you know what you're fixing to do? Go in depression. You must have people in your life. And he said, all the saints have someone to share with. You have someone to serve with. I've learned more about that this week. Being here, realizing what a joy it is to have other people to serve with. Being united with an opportunity to do other things for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To be able to serve with other people about making a difference in somebody's life and taking the gospel and changing their life. What a thrill that is. He said, not only the people you have people to share with, have people to serve with, you have people to shout with. Yeah, now, I don't know about you, but have you ever got happy in Jesus? Yeah. Have you ever got happy in Jesus when you're by yourself? Yeah. I have. Man, I've been riding. Down. I spend a lot of time riding. I don't know why it is, but I do. But I spend a lot of time in the vehicle. Sometimes God will get in the vehicle with me through a song, through preaching, or just me praying, or just a good Holy Ghost, and ain't nothing going on. He'll just get in the vehicle. Man, I have time. But you know something? They don't last long. They come and go pretty quick. I'll shout till I can't shout no more. I'll say amen till I can't say amen no more. But you know what makes shouting better? People to do it with. When you get around God's people and all the saints of God, and you'll be rejoicing and praising God and thanking Him for everything you do, and all of a sudden you're out of breath. Man, you done cry, you done cried till you can't cry no more. You done shouted till you can't shout no more. You done wave glory till you can't wave glory no more. And you stop for just a minute. And about that time, your brother, your sister over here, they start waving their handkerchief and they start praising Jesus. And the next thing you know, it's so good, you go get in on it again. Amen. You I mean, their, their cup run over and spilled on you and you get to rejoice again. Amen. Yeah. I went in the house of God sometimes and didn't feel like shouting. Somebody else gets shouting. Next thing oh, I get to feeling it. Yeah. Next thing I know, I done forgot they quit shouting and God done sit down with me. Yeah. Hey man, you say, preacher, what are you saying? All that we have in the Lord, we have all of you. Yeah. 
That's what he said, all the saints. Someone to shout with. Someone to rejoice with. Verse 21. I gotta, I'm going to have to stop just somewhere here, along here. Verse 21, look what he says. Far above all, another time you see the word all, principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is, that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things of the church. You've got to take these verses and study them out when he starts. Anytime you find that word all in there, you start studying out what he's trying to tell you. What he's trying to tell us here now as you look into these wor- wor- verses, he says, God ain't going let, to let nothing happen. Our safe, there, there is nothing in this world, there's nothing in this universe that will ever come that, guess what, is more powerful than our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. Go back to that water. Why is it so hot, preacher? I got in here Monday night and it's 63 degrees and I got out of the truck. I got out last night and it's 85, same time, same place. Different sunshine. Why is it so hot? God's got to get some of that water back in its place. Some of that water down there in Florida got to get back in its place because it's getting too far up on that thing. It's coming up in the ground everywhere else. God's got to get it back in its place now. He ain't tell, hey, listen, by the way, you know what's so thrilling? You know what's wrong with us? We like to micromanage everything. You can believe creation any way you want to believe it. If you're a gap person, that's totally up to you. I have no issue with it. But there was a time and place that God told that water what to do, and he ain't never had to go back and refresh his memory. That water's still doing what he told it to do when he told it to do it. Amen. It ain't stopped. He didn't have to have, he didn't have, to have a refresher course in how to do it. He didn't have to have a training course in how to do it. He didn't have to have a pump-up class in how to do it. He told it that many years ago. And thanks be unto God, she's still a doing it. Because why? He still has the power. Now you say, preacher, what is he saying? All things under his feet. Nothing, nothing can take us away. Now listen to me well. Dear sister, I'm praying for your son, but he had to allow that to happen. God could not be the God that we say. He is if he was a God that could overpower you and force you to go back into sin. Not one thing in this world is more powerful than him. Uh, I don't know about you, but every once in a while I think something's about to take me out. Amen. There's things going on in my life. I don't know how in the name of God we're going to get through it. I spent months watching my little girl cry herself to sleep at night. I spent months sleeping in the guest bedroom because my little girl couldn't sleep by herself. She had to sleep with her mama because something went on in her life. Spent months watching her weep and cry, looking over her shoulder, wondering what was going to happen next. I spent months walking around when I would walk in certain places with my hands in my pocket. And if you're so dumb, you don't know why my hands in my pocket. You ain't as big a redneck as I thought you was. I spent months watching my wife and daughter have to be around me, couldn't be left alone. I had a particular opportunity, the thing that I had been working at for years that I had to call and throw the brakes completely on it. Wondering, was it ever going to get any better? And today, I rejoice. My little girl's living by herself. Her and her son. She come to the house yesterday, spent a little time with her mom, and she said, where are you going? 
She said, I'm going home. She said, I thought since your daddy would be gone, you might want to spend the night with me. She said, I'm going home. It's a lot better there, Mama. I got one that big, grandson a little older than that. How much difference are they? Are they a month? I seen you point at me. Just a couple months in between them. He's a little older than her. You say, go, you say, say, Waylon, don't go home. Bye bye. Used to cry when they used to take him away from me. Now, bye bye. Say, Waylon, you gonna go home? Bye bye. You say, preacher, what are you saying? So many times in our lives, we have a hard time loving the Lord. But if we realize there ain't nothing stronger than my God. Nothing. I don't care what you're going through with. I don't care what you're facing. Nothing is as powerful as the Lord you've got. Nothing is. Under God, it's easy to love someone that's in the most. Mm. Lord God, you know what? Lost people aren't to be able to love Jesus because they want to run with people with the most power. We as God's people, nothing can take us away. Nothing we can't do. All power is given unto him. What did he say? All power has been given unto me, and guess what he done to that power? <laughs> Preacher. Preacher. <coughs> I just wish I could. <laughs> I'd love to help you. <coughs> If I don't preach Sunday morning, I'm going to blame it on you people. Uh, it's a good thing it's Father's Day. The guests will be in there and they won't know why I ain't, no, I ain't, I ain't at my normal pace. <laughs> Preacher, I'd do it if I just knew I had the ability. I'd do it if I had it in me. Sadly, you know what? Now listen, I ain't talking about materialistic things again. When I first got saved and me and my wife got married, she wouldn't let me carry no money. Especially when we go to church. She'd make sure when we go into church, she'd say, you got any money in your pocket? And I'd say, yeah, I got something. And she said, give it to me. We go to the house of God and somebody needs something, I'd give everything I had away. I mean, I'd give it all away. I'd start playing. I mean, missionary come by, so give it all away. And if somebody needs something, here, here, take up an offering, here, here, here. She started taking it away from me so I wouldn't give away everything we had. But here's the problem. I ain't worried about the materialistic things. I'm worried about the things that's far greater than that. And you know what that is? God. Nothing we can't do. Nothing that we can't do. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Through, by the means of Him. Nothing we can't withstand. All power is given unto Him. Now, I don't know about you, but some of this stuff kind of gets repetitive, don't it? But you start thinking about how repetitive our Lord is. And you know why He's repetitive? Because He wants us to finally get it. Sometimes we just can't get it. Just keep talking about it, keep talking about it, keep talking about it, keep talking about it, keep talking about it. And all of a sudden, one day the light comes on, you say, Wow, I got it now, Lord. Ain't you glad God ain't like we are? Because if God is like we are, He'd say, Good Lord, I've told you for the last 25 years, you thick headed human, I can't get it in there and finally got it in there. God ain't that way. He just keeps coming back, telling us again, telling us again, telling us again, telling us again. Listen, I'm done. 43 times in the book of Ephesians, you find the word all. 43 times, if you will study it long enough and get with God long enough, you can see Jesus showing up in every one of them. I preached this series on Wednesday night at the church for probably a year or a little longer. And every single time I found the word all, I'd wonder how God could, because all principalities and all power, you get over there to where them is, and you're thinking, how's that God going to get? And the next thing you know, God jumps slap dab in the middle of it and shows you what you can do because of Him. Right. What you have because of Him. Right. Right. Listen, I need you to understand, you want to stay in love with the Lord. What is that old song? Y'all got one of them Old Church of God hymnals. You ain't got one? No, the Church of God one. The old red back. I want to know more. Is it in that book? Just a different page. I just want to reason I know that because I know it's on page six in that book. I just remember the pages. I don't remember that. I want to know more about my Jesus. 
You say, why, preacher? Because it makes me want to fall in love with him even more. To realize that he's that kind of God. To realize that he done that for me. Listen, I can understand him doing it for you. I can understand him doing the things he does because he loves you and because you're that good a person. But I know me, amen. This week I've been that man. I've shaved my I've shaved my face twice a day, and I've had to look in the mirror and shave it. I was hoping for this week is over with. I could figure out how in the name of God to not shave, have to look in that mirror and shave myself. I'm tired of seeing myself, and the more I look, the more wretched I see. But you know what? I want to know more because you know what? He gave everything He gave. That book is full of it. God's word is full of the promises that God has given to us, and He done it. Mm. You and I have a terrible time showing grace. When somebody does something we don't like, cut them off. Write them out. They act like we don't want them to act, say what we don't want them to say, do what we don't want them to do. It don't line up with our belief. I'm going to tell you something about that right there, and I'm not going to get off on it. But if it don't line up with your belief, don't mean it's always wrong. And if you keep going down that road one of these days, you're going to be up there standing by yourself because they're going to find out there's somebody, somewhere, nobody, nowhere that believes it just like you do. You say, preacher, what are you saying? Oh, we believe it. I guarantee you. If you start picking it apart, you'll find something. It may be, what, what, it may be over the fruit. That's the dumbest mess I've ever seen in my life. What does it matter? What does it matter? Somebody asked me a question. They come to me and ask me a question all the time. I, I'm, I'm just me. Don't ask if you don't want to answer. I won't tell you. But if you ask, I'm going to tell you. Here's my answer sometimes. Now, preacher, what do you think about that? Blah, 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 blah. I've learned over the years Jesus answered a question with a question so they come with this wild ideal theology from over in the left field what does it matter in a hundred years from now that question you just asked me will it matter probably won't then why are we even talking about it I got better at better things to worry about than that now you say preacher what are you trying to say I want you to listen to me next time I visit up here Next time I come by, I want to look and see you. Hey, some of you I've seen before. Been a while since I've been here, but I've seen you. I remember your face. Some of you, some of it. Now I'm just gonna tell you something. Hey, some of you little ones, look about that big. If I come back, if I was back in six months, I probably wouldn't remember you, because you're gonna change that much between the time now and then. But some of the rest of you that don't get up but get older, I remember. I remember. But you know what I want to see? I want to see you still in love with Jesus. Matter of fact, I want to see you in love with Jesus more now, more then than you are now. How do I, how do, I do that? I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion. I'm going to receive as my reward. That's how you stay in love. Heads bowed and eyes closed. We stand to our feet, God, for the privilege to be here tonight. I'm grateful for the Word of God. I'm grateful for all the things you have given and done for me. I pray, dear God, that you would just touch and help this invitation. It has been such a tremendous, wonderful week. Lord, I have been helped tremendously. Your touch, your power, your presence has been wonderful, and I'm thankful for it. I pray that not just the people in the pews, but this old preacher behind the pulpit, let me fall more in love with you, Lord. Help me to learn more about you. Help me to grow in the knowledge of the things of God that I will stay in love with you. Help me, God, I pray. Bless and let you work as only you can. In Jesus' name. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? 
If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.